Tottenham three. <laughs> Tottenham <laughs> three. Arsenal nil. Harry Kane with the double. Son with a goal just after half time. The top four race is on. The top four race is on absolute fire. It looks like it's going to go down to the wire. A big weekend ahead now. Tottenham versus Burnley. Arsenal Newcastle on Monday night football. But what a game we witnessed tonight. Spurs in the ascendancy from the beginning. The strongest side. A penalty, a penalty conceded early on in the game for a push, a push in the back. Arsenal fans not happy about it. Rob Holden then picks himself up a red card and Arsenal are absolutely rioted and destroyed by Harry Kane and Son at the lane. And what night it was, it was exhilarating, it was enthralling for the neutral. Spurs fans are absolutely buzzing. Of course, it's going to be a different feeling and a very, very different emotion for the Arsenal fans out there. We're going to be taking calls tonight. Igal will be on. Gunnar Souls will be here. Mo will be here. We've got some good studio guests for you as well. But your opinions in the comments matter. We need to hear a lot. Of, listen, I need to hear from you. A lot of gooners. I listen to Spaces. I listen to the internet. I watch. Thought they were going to turn up to White Hart Lane and win and win comfortably. It was nothing of the... In fairness, Spurs took their foot off the gas for the last 60 minutes and reserved their energy for the game against Burnley. It was a pounding. It was a beating. Gunas, you want to hear from you. What are the confidence levels saying now for finishing in the top four? Remember, it is still in your hands. It's about the bounce back. You need a bit of Zebedee, a little bit of spring in your step after this. And Tottenham fans, do you think Arsenal are now going to crumble. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings, people. First super chat of the night here says, everyone except Arsenal fans saw this coming. I can guess now Gunner fans will blame the ref. Usually it's hard to break down 10 men, not Arsenal is what Aaron has got to say. Hey, listen, everyone's going to have a view and everybody's going to have an opinion. And we are going to debate it in, 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 the, in, the, in the section. I'm going to say this about the penalty. I'm going to say this about the penalty. It was a push in the back. It was a deliberate push in the back. And I've, I've not seen one given before for a push in the back. So I, maybe Arsenal fans have got a point um, that the pushes in the back shouldn't be penalties. But I don't know. Maybe. I want to know from Gunas, do you think that Spurs deserved a penalty for that? And the red card. Arsenal have had 13 red cards, 13 players sent off in the Premier League since Mikel Arteta's first game in charge. Five more than any other side. Now, I know that Arsenal fans were pushing out this notion. They were pushing out this kind of narrative that actually this was because, you know, the, 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 you know red cards per tackles was out, out of sync and everything else. But the amount of stupidity is unbelievable. What Rob Holding did off the ball, a cent for me, it was an elbow stroke forearm smash for no reason. To, I mean, he's lucky he didn't get a straight red. Some referees would send you off straight away for that. You're already booked. You're one nil down. There is absolutely zero need for Rob Holding to be doing it. But these are the kind of channel tackles I've seen some Arsenal fans celebrate this year. Ben White, I don't remember who they were playing. There was a game where he kind of got away with a kind of foul like that. And it was being celebrated on social media. My Benjamin, my centre-back. And, and I remember some gooners saying, what are you all celebrating this for? This is a type of stupidity that could cost us top four, that could cost us points, that could cost us games. And Rob Holding should hang his head in shame tonight. He should be apologizing to the fans. He should be apologizing to his teammates because Arsenal could have come back against Tottenham with, with 11 men. The game was still on. The game was still there. To, to get a red card like that, a little bit like Gabriel against Manchester City, just utter, utter stupidity from him. And with Gabriel now pulling that hamstring, Ben White's going to have to come back in having a lack of centre-backs, could that now cost Arsenal? Could that be the, the tipping point now in the top four race? Imagine that, holding with a silly red card, weakening his team. He didn't know Gabriel was going to pick up an injury, but he didn't need to be sent off. He's needlessly going to miss the next game. Best young, young team in England. We made mincemeat of this team. Second half was just a training session, is what Jerome has got to say here. Uh, Terry, we need to come outside. Tottenham fans clip uh, is what Ryan says there. I, I mean, look, I, I'm not... Come outside, play. Tottenham fans! Where are you? <laughs> I, I, I did. I had to. I had to get it done. I had to get it done. Now, I'm sure Igal will be... Look, listen, and Arsenal are still in the ascendancy here. They've still got the dominant force. Um, 
Arsenal fans saying they've caught Chelsea is priceless. And if it makes Egal feel better, he's come outside Tottenham fans. Where are you? Meme um, should be. Sorry, should get him some serious coin now. Uh, is what he's got. Is what he's got to say. Well, I own the rights to it, to be fair. But uh, there we go. Um, I'm sure he's going to be on with this in a minute. But I'm joined in the studio tonight. First of all, Colleen Uzaguna. How are you feeling, young lady? Bro, I fucking had enough, Terry. I've had enough. Can we just fuck off top four for like two seconds? For two seconds. This is a North London derby, yeah? We, what, we came out for the first three minutes? The first three minutes was a pathetic performance. Rob Holding. Rob Holding! I don't even know what the fuck he was thinking. He's one of our most experienced players. We have a guy at Tavares week in, week out. When he plays, he makes a mistake. One of our more experienced players comes in and does that in a North London derby. I don't care what it means or we could have got... um. Champions League at Tottenham's ground. Fuck that for two seconds. It's a North London derby. And what was that? It's fucking pathetic. It's a bunch of bollocks. They're all shit. They can all go fuck themselves. I'm you, done with them. Fuck it. So you're not very happy with... In terms of tonight, what, what went wrong? I mean, the penalty, first of all, you agree it was a penalty? You, in, the, in the eyes of the law, it is a penalty. Do we see them given? We don't really. But what... What's he doing? Why even give the referee a decision to make in such a big heightened game? Fucking dodo brain. Secondly, after that, I literally said, where's the response? Where's the response? We've just gone 1-0 down. Spurs are loving it. Spurs need to win this game. Spurs have to win this game. So we go a goal down away from home in a North London derby. What, what did they do? What did, what did they do? What did they do? Fuck all. They did fuck all. Fuck, uh, honestly. I get the frustration. I get the frustration, and from Rob Holding's point of view, I, I've seen a number of Arsenal fans on social media talk about the referee ruining the game. In your opinion, Cole, did the referee in the game, or was this on the likes of Cedric and Holding? It, it's on the ref didn't ruin the game. I think Cedric's one is is harsh. It's harsh, but like, why give the ref a decision to make? And Holding is just stupid. It's just it's stupid. Like he knew he was on a yellow card. Did he not? We all we all saw him on, and he deserved his first yellow. And then the second one, you're, you're right. You're right in front of the ref. And even even there's VAR. But we we doing that? We doing that for? Mm. Someone please tell me the logic. I would love to know. I want to know. Let me know because uh, I just can't. I just wanted a little bit more from them. It's a North London derby. When you go a goal down, you fight. You you show something. They show nothing. And then when you come out for the second half, within what two minutes, we concede. What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Look, I, look, I hear you on it. And I think Arsenal fans should be so frustrated with their team tonight. I understand they're young. I understand that they're still growing. And this doesn't end any trajectory or any growth that's been going on. But it was a very unprofessional performance tonight. And it has to be looked at. That's 13 red cards under Mikel Arteta. And sometimes the, the, the bravado of the team, the banter they give other players, the kind of attitude and, the, and sort of the, 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 the throwing the toys out the pram from on the bench, all these things manifest themselves. And there's an ill discipline within this Arsenal team. Consistently in big games, in big games, we're always giving away a penalty. Like every other North London derby, we give you a penalty. When we went away to Old Trafford, penalty. We're just... I, I don't even know what goes through their heads. I don't know whether they're trying too hard or they're just brainless. It's one or the other. And I know we're still fourth and I know like, oh, yada, yada, yada. But I, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't like in the context of tonight and today's game. Why? What is that got to do with anything? I even spoke to Patrick before. Obviously, we banter online and whatnot, but we spoke privately and we said to each other at the end of the day, Put top four aside, it's still a North London derby. And you can take losing, and it hurts to lose in, a North, in any derby, but you, you want to lose because you're outclassed. Yeah. Or you're just, you just, the quality, or well, the quality was not there, but you could see on paper that they're miles ahead. That's not the case. Like, we're both, it was a mid off, essentially. That's what it was. And, ugh. I hear you completely. I've got Alan's joining us, big Spurs fan. Obviously, you, you're chuffed, you're in a great mood with the win. Yeah. Um, did the referee help you tonight or do you think you were just too good for Arsenal? Um, like I said, when we were watching the game, I thought the penalty, you know, I would have been annoyed if it had been given against Spurs. But when Cedric doesn't go for the ball and just jumps into him, you give the referee a decision to make. Referee made the decision and they've got to deal with it. And then it just seemed after that that they decided the, the mentality of Arsenal just fell apart. Um, Holding was looking for that all game, looking to uh, roll Son up and he was the one who got rolled up himself and got sent off. It's um, just negligence on his part. Um, and then after that, it was like 
like as I said, a training session. We controlled the game. We, they gave themselves so much to do because of stupid mistakes, and they've only got themselves to blame for it. Um, I did say to Arsenal fans when we came to yours and he beat us 3-1, Bad manager, awful thing like that. Conte will not do the same. Conte set the team up, knew what he was going to do, and Arsenal just looked like boys out there tonight. They did, and you are very, you're being very reserved with your excitement because I know what Spurs are like. So I'm, I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I'm, I, I yeah. hear you on that. Adam here says holding thought he was uh, Michael Chandler, big bozo. Michael Chandler, what a fighter. Uh, I agree with Colleen. It was North London derby only for ten minutes. After that, it was just che uh, Tottenham all the way. Top four or not, that was a lesson. Them man got spun. <laughs> At original base, and he says, Colleen, hold that like Robert, uh, is what he's got to say. There, we, a lot of Chelsea fans tonight were really supporting um, uh, Tottenham in this game, which is, I think it's because of the whole we're going to catch you type thing. We are going to go to call soon, people, but make sure the like button is being smashed. Give that a hit right now. Make sure you're subscribing. We want to know what your fan highlights and reactions are to the game as well. Get your comments in. We'll share the link very soon for the rest of you to call in. But we've got Mohammed backstage. We've got Brandon, Gunnar Souls, Egal, Jason, all waiting to come on and have their say. Before that, though, top four. Arsenal have still got it in their hands. Colleen, who are the favourites out of the two of you now, in your opinion? I mean, there's two games left. The momentum's with Tottenham. Let's be real. Like, I'm not saying that we can't get it. I'm not saying it's out of our hands, but there's two, it's not like we've got 10, 15 games left. It's two games left. Mm. We, you play on Sunday, we play on Monday. And this is where the mentality has got to show. If, if Arsenal mean business, which they didn't tonight, if they mean business, you come back on Monday night and you just, you just hurt Spurs by making them think this was for nothing. Because you know for damn sure on Sunday against Burnley, Spurs are going to be smiling. They're thinking, yeah, Arsenal ain't got this. They don't have the mentality. Two games left. They've absolutely thrown it away here. Mm. We beat Burnley at home. The pressure's all on them because you play first as well. Yeah. So, <sighs> how about this? I know you've said Spurs have got a habit of throwing these things away, but you're yeah. playing Burnley at the lane? Yeah. Burnley at the lane. Ar Arsenal are away. Their record on Monday night football is poor. How do you see this weekend going? What's happening? Um, we play first. I can't... We played first against Brighton and we threw it away. We had the chance. But for me, we play first. You got to, If that doesn't give you the boost, destroying Arsenal in the North London derby, then you, you don't deserve to be in top mm. four. So we've got to use that. We've got to run with it and hopefully get the result against Burnley and then on to Norwich. Um, I would say Arsenal, obviously, points on the ball, like they've said all season long. Points on the ball mean lots. So you're still in the ascendancy. You're still in the driver's seat. But I've said a long time with Arsenal, with such a young team, when it comes to the crunch, will we buckle? Mm. And by that showing tonight, you buckle there and you're going away to Newcastle, who are much better under Eddie Howe, and you could buckle there. And then obviously, depending on Everton as well, you've got a lot to play for mm. in that game as well. So it's not easy for either side. Both teams are throwing it away. Both teams are helping each mm -hmm. other out. But I would say Spurs, I'm going to back Spurs to get top four. I just think Conte will get him over the line. I think Arsenal will fall away considering Gabriel went down with an injury. Holding's now missing. You've got Partey out. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so you've got all these problems as well. So mm -hmm. I think Newcastle will take you mm -hmm. to school. I'm not trying to be like hyperbolic or anything like that because it can. It's, uh, I know Arsenal are still fourth. I know that there are points ahead. But how can you walk? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling emotional right now. But how can I walk out of a North London derby like that with two games left, knowing this is our chance to be back in the Champions League yeah. after what five years? Yeah. Like, how, like, if anyone else can be positive, please, I want to hear it. Please oh. lift my spirits because I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, this, this is the thing, right? It could go either way. It's, if, for me, I, I, I can't make my mind up until after the Spurs game. And I know that's obviously makes predictions easier when you know more of the facts. But if Spurs win and then go ahead of Arsenal, their record on Monday night football, you know what? The, the Newcastle fans will want to throw a spanner into the works because football fans love doing that. The pressure is on massively and it's going to be crunch time. And I think there'll be a few Arsenal fans right now that on Monday were talking about, Terry, put the clip out now that the, the Tottenham fans, where are you? Because I was absolutely right. And 
There's a lot of two. Listen, Egal's my guy, but he wasn't the only one. So many Arsenal fans, and I, I, I make these predictions all the time in football. Whenever people go, "That's it, it's done," foregone conclusion. The amount of times football says, "Hang on a minute, we're gonna throw in, we're gonna throw a spanner into the works. We're gonna change things up. Um, we're gonna start going to calls in a minute, people. We want your thoughts and feelings on this as well." Uh, Nav here says Ben White couldn't say to a fan he plays for AFC. I don't quite get that. Oh, it was that video where the guy goes up to him and he's like, oh, do you do crypto? And he's like, no, I'm a footballer. Oh, oh. that one there. Right, I get it now. I get it. Uh, perfect spanking. I wanted them uh, to get six. That goal against us from Saka uh, was for pulling down Aspioqueta stung me to the core. So this Just focus. Was focus karma. on the FA Cup final, man. <laughs> get out of here. Oh. Respect to Colleen and Je- Jesse. We're still going there, Jesse. <laughs> uh, they're the only Arsenal fans that know... Uh, what their team is like and keep a cool head. Definitely didn't just keep a cool head now. Yeah, I think it's more you win a game and you don't start talking mm. about winning the Champions League in 18 months or whatever. I think that's what they kind of mean No, there. we'll win it in 12. Josh here says, big up uh, to the panel. My guy, Alan, massive win tonight. Come on, you Spurs. Ian Bill FC. Uh, man, man, I said that in the background. <laughs> Listen, look, Arsenal still got a lot to play for. I'm not writing Arsenal off right now. It's it's this is all about bounce back. This is all about showing the mentality again. They did it after those three losses on the bounce. They went and won four on the bounce. It's just do you know what's really mad about this? Mm. And this is where still there's progression at Arsenal. Yeah. But I still think they're getting too giddy. Every time this season, Spurs, Man United, and Arsenal have become the favorites. Mm. They've, they've opened the door for somebody else yep. again consistently. And that there is a sign as to why people, oh, I get, again, I get getting celebra- excited about the future. But as my dad would always say, keep your powder dry. Because our team, all our teams, mm. we're so far away from actually being back and being ready to compete. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. We're so far away. Mm-hmm. We're so far away. Exactly. I mean, I just want to say I saw a clip from uh, Granit Xhaka like driving out his car saying when people asked him about the <laughs> North London derby, and he said, "Oh, we don't talk, we do." You didn't do shit tonight at Granit Xhaka, so yeah, you can hold that. I hear you on that. There's a lot of rats in the comment section. Oh, Lee okay, Gunner, right. thank you for sending your army over to the football terrace. <laughs> of course, Lee Gunner is absolutely. I mean, it'll, it'll be buzzing right now. But remember Lee Gunner's mantra: "I want my team to lose." Because I know that Arteta is always going to foul. Therefore, the more we lose, the quicker he's out the football club. I don't agree with ever wanting my team to lose, but I do understand the logic. The Rat Army that are watching tonight, thank you for joining in. All fans are welcome of all opinions on the football terrace. No echo chambers. We're going to start going to calls in just a moment. We've got a super chat here. It says, Colleen... Um, Skip that, please. Is ju- oh, oh, hang on. It's just super lovely. Uh, when she gets mad like that, Spurs beat Burnley, advantage to Spurs, and now withholding Gabriel and... Is Xhaka out for Newcastle? He picked up a yellow at, towards the end. That's gone, I, though. It doesn't matter. I don't, How many has he got, though? No, it's, it's waved off after some... No, oh, not if you get not if you get 10. 10. Is it 10? Oh, oh. if Jack is missing as well... I know that. Jeez! There we go. That's a big one. Right, we're going to go to calls. First up, Brandon's coming on to have his say with us now. Smash the like and the share button. By the way, um, boys, if you could put the link into the comment section, we'll get it pinned out. We'll get the link out for anyone else who wants to phone in and have their say. Whether you want to celebrate, whether you want to rant, we are the only fan channel that actually gives you a chance to speak your mind. Give us your highlights. Give us your reactions. Let's go. Brandon, welcome back to the show, my friend. You obviously look... <laughs> but, <laughs> bro, do you know what's mad? Do you know what's mad? Hang on a minute. Whoa. In that picture, if you dyed your hair blonde, you look like DT. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Sorry. Anyway, mate, give me your thoughts. Uh, disappointing night for the Gooners. That was demoralising, pathetic, and it highlights everything that's bad about Arsenal Football Club. All right? We're talking about Rob Holden here, one of the most experienced defenders in, in in our squad. Just losing his head. Absolutely losing his head. What are you doing, mate? You've, you've played in enough of these games to know that, yes, you have to have aggression, but too much aggression can get you sent off. And he goes and loses his head and, and he does that. But even before the game started, Terry Wright, I'm looking at our team. I'm looking at our system and the way that we set up. And I am telling every single person here right now, and I've been telling people, Arteta tax is real. 
It's real. Yeah. We all we needed tonight was a draw. We didn't need to win the game. We just needed a draw. That is it. Right? Mm-hmm. Match Conte up. Play five at the back. Yeah. Make it difficult for Spurs to break us down. And then later on in the game, if you can keep it tight and you can keep it at nil-nil, all of a sudden you will start to see Spurs open up. Then we've got chances on the counter-attack. No, no, Mikel Arteta, we're going to go to Tottenham's ground where it's going to be hostile because there's going to be fans galore that are up for this game based, uh, going off of you know what, what could potentially happen in this. And we're going to play the way that we want to play. And we're going to play right into Conte and Tottenham's hands. Well done, Mikel Arteta, right? Rob Holding as well, on the Rob Holding situation, he had two fouls before he even got booked, which could have been bookable offences. They happen right next to the touchline, right next to Mikel Arteta. Where is the leadership from the manager to say, calm down, calm down? Where's our captain, yeah? Our captain's Martin Odegaard. He ain't no leader. Yeah, I don't care what anybody says. He's not a leader. Where is that, where is that player on the pitch that reflects the manager and the manager as well, showing that leadership to tell Rob Holden to calm down? That is what cost us this game, him getting sent off. Now we've got an injury to Gabriel. Now we've got Granite Xhaka, who is out because he's picked up too many yellow cards. And the way that we lost that game tonight could cost us top four. It could mm-hmm. cost us top four. I'm mm-hmm. not even... It's, it's, it's an absolute joke. It's like the everything worst way you could go into it, game. they did. Everything riding on this game, you've got a chance to qualify for Champions League football with two games to go and end Tottenham's season at the same time. How much more motivation do you need? Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. I agree with uh, Colleen as well. We played for about three minutes in that game. And then after that, we rolled over. Pathetic, mate. And this is exactly why I've been Arteta out. Yeah? Because I don't believe this guy is going to take us anywhere. I believe we are on the roundabout yet again. If we get top four this season, it's just going to mask over the problems. We're one loss away from losing the same amount of games we did last season. We've conceded more goals than we did last season. And Arteta, yeah, this great manager, has spent £250 million. The majority of that money has gone on the defence. Yet we conceded more than what we have when we had Bellerin, Kolasinac, Mustafi. Wake up, Arsenal fans. Seriously. Seriously. Brand, listen, I get your frustrations. I hear exactly what you're saying, mate. I appreciate you coming on uh, and having your say tonight, my friend. Um, try and cheer up. I, 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 listen, I'm in the mud. I, I know the feeling, my friend. The hairline's looking strong, though, brother. That, that's a good thing you've got going for you, mate. I wish. Mine cost me five grand. Listen, I'll speak to you again soon, my friend, and we'll chat. Cheers, bro. Listen, I understand his frustration. I get where he's coming from. Next on the show, Jason's here. Big Arsenal fan. Jason, what are you saying, mate? What are you saying, Terry? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, um, good mate. Thank you. Yeah, mate, give, give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts. Absolutely fuming, man. There's no passion. There's no desire. There's lack of mentality. And I've been, obviously, last week, yeah, against Leeds, yeah, I was outside the ground, yeah. There's a few other Arsenal fans alongside my cousins and everything like that, yeah. Oh, why are you being out a hater? Why are you abusing him like this? Oh, this, this is my opinion and I'm proving, right. I'm getting proved on right. When the big things come, yeah, when it matters, when it actually matters, he absolutely bottles it. He has no balls, no tactics, no structure, nothing. As apparently he changed the culture of the club. He apparently fixed up the defence. We conceded more goals than last season with the defence of Hector Bellerin, David Luiz, Rob Holding and who else the left back, whatever it is. I, 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 I'm tired of it, man. I'm actually tired of it. I, I'm, I'm not angry at the moment. I, I just knew this was coming because, you know, this is this is a big, this is a North London derby and I just knew it was going to happen and I'm disappointed, but I'm not that disappointed. I just saw it coming. But I don't, I don't know what's, what's happening. Do you think now. you'll bounce back? Do you think you'll come back and get that all-important win now against Newcastle? What's your thoughts right now in the moment? No. 
we won't. We won't because Gabriel's out. Um, we'll say Jack has uh, Jack has some suspended. Uh, Rob Holding suspended. I, I don't know who's going to be the defense for next week anyway. And Newcastle are quality side as well. And you know what? They're more than cap- They're basically the second highest form. I think is it behind Man City or Liverpool? Um, in this year calendar year, twenty twenty two. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be surprising. We're losing two one, by the way. But yeah, I'm not going to be a hater or anything like that. I don't care if anyone comes or comes on to me. Like I, I said, how I said it, how I said. Like this manager is not good enough to take us to the next level, man. I'll tear it out. I can't lie. Yeah. Mate, I, Jay, thanks, Jace, thanks for calling in, mate, and have your say. I really appreciate it. Top man, thank you. Colin, I want to ask you a question before we do more calls. Do you feel like someone like him, he's, he, he hasn't backed, he's always been Arteta out. This isn't someone that's been reacting to tonight's game. But do you understand Arteta, Arteta out as frustration that when there's a new deal, you, you, you've got the chance tonight, if you perform well, to end Spurs' season, qualify for the Champions League at their ground, and it was a non performance game. Can you understand their frustration? 100%. I mean, I personally didn't even want... I mean, he's... Arteta first, he's stupid for even coming out and saying they offered me after three games of um, losing and he was like, oh, wow, they're showing how much they back me. Mm. Bro, that's not even a good thing, man. Because our board ain't that board, man. They're not. It's it's really not that way. And it, I know some people are arguing that if you give him the contract once the season's done, it's like, oh, so you're just rewarding him for Champions League. And if he doesn't get Champions League, it's like, oh... So that's good enough. So it's a bit of a difficult situation. I mean, I, I like Arteta. I, I mean, I think some, some of tonight is on him, but a lot of it is also on the players. Like, if Rob Holden doesn't have a brain, what can he do? But I think whether we get Champions League or not, if he's to stay in a job, which he will, which he will, the Cronkies are not getting rid of him, mm. but there, ha- there needs to be, even if we get Champions League, there needs to be significant pressure. Because as Brandon said, how much money has been spent on our defence? It's not like it's not a small amount. We spent a lot of money and, and more goals conceded, and one one more defeat this season, mm. and it's you're equal in last mm. year's defeats. And I think for a lot of people, like I still see the improvements at Arsenal. Mm. And I, mm. I understand the frustration that people have, um, but I get Jason's point of view and Brandon's. I've never backed this manager, and every time they feel like, oh, maybe just maybe we are going to improve, they mm. feel like they're coming crashing back mm. down to earth again. We're going to speak to a Spurs fan now. We're going to get Orchi oh, on. Then a gal's coming on to have you say, Orchi's here with us now. What are you saying, mate? Hello. Good evening, guys. How you doing? Yes. <laughs> Alan. Wait, wait a minute. Finally. Orchie, I'm, sorry. I'm very sorry. You've got more passion than that. Let it out. Don't be shy. Let it out. Yes. yes. No, I do. I do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a, what a, what a great win. Um, i got to be honest. When I saw the team news, and uh, let's nobody's mentioned it, Romero was out. As soon as I saw that, and uh, what's his name came in, I was just, I was dead worried. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've got to say, I, I agree with Colleen. It's, it's like you know, I expected a lot more from Arsenal, and they they actually completely fell flat. Um, and now, obviously, some of the injuries that picked up, obviously, holding stupid. Uh, I think I I think the penalty uh, definitely like I think it was just too obvious. Like he really, he just basically he didn't even play the ball. He just went for the guy. And that's why he gave he had he gave the referee a decision to make, and the referee made it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm just so happy. I mean, this is this is it's my birthday on Saturday as well, so a nice little early birthday present for me. Nice. Um, well, happy birthday, my friend. How confident are you now um, uh, of making the top four? I think um, I agree. Uh, we have a tendency to mess things up ourselves as well, so I'm a bit cautious, like Alan. Um, but I've got to say, we playing first and. Be, I think we will definitely beat Norwich. I don't see any problems us going and destroying Norwich. Uh, the big test for me is uh, Sunday against Burnley. Um, they've got to... The way they've played against Liverpool and the way they played tonight, uh, Conte's. I'm sure he's going to drill them completely. If we beat Burnley, we get the three points, then it's on Arsenal. And that's going to be a huge, huge, huge um, pressure on them. Uh, Monday night and now with the number of like one player or two players missing but you know uh, basically they've got you know Gabriel out holding out now Shaka out as well Um, 
that that's like who are they going to be able to feel? They're, they're going to be really down to the. I mean, they were already kind of down to the bare bones. Well, I, I think yeah. I've I heard a rumor that they're going to be hoping for an outbreak of CV19 again. That's what they're hoping for. Get them games yeah. um, pushed back. Orchi, listen, happy birthday Saturday, my friend. Thanks Good for mate. coming on and having your say, mate. Really appreciate Thank it, bro. You. Top top man. Uh, this super chat here though says Conte is Conte, world class. Arteta is Arteta. That's the one thing as well. When you've got a world class manager. And I'm not suggesting that Arteta can't get a much, much better than he is now. But when you are, when you have a world-class manager, Alan, it makes a big difference. It does make a big difference. For me, the way I see Arteta at the moment, although he's, he has improved Arsenal a bit, is kids leaving kids. So there's such a young team, such a young manager. When it comes to a situation like this, it completely fell apart and he didn't rein him in. You could see Holding was looking for Son to put one on him from the start and Arteta just allowed it to continue. And then it happened. You had so many cards in that game because mm. Arteta didn't see it. Arteta didn't stop it. And I think the situation, the occasion got to him uh, as it did the players, because like with the decision, Cedric wasn't even looking. He was just looking to take out Son for the penalty and Holden was just looking. So I think he rolled him up too much. And I think he then didn't pull him back. And that's what happened. That's why you ended up losing because the game was over in half, the, like yeah. half an hour. Mm. No doubt. Viewers, we are going to talk a bit about Harry Kane again. Two more goals in North London derbies. I he was already the highest goal scorer in this fixture. I think it puts him on to 12 or 13 now. He's two or three goals clear of Thierry Henry, who is the Premier League's GOAT. Uh, another great performance from him. And he's the highest scorer in the Premier League since January. Kudasevsky, the highest assister in the Premier League since January. What Antonio Conte has done with those two has been sensational as well. We've got some more super chats to come very, very soon. Actually, one here says Lee Gunner is going to have a field day. This is hilarious. Trust Arsenal to help Chelsea and themselves out. Hey, how can you bottle to bottle jobs? Pathetic is what DR um, has got to say. Uh, viewers, up next on the show, Igal is here with us to have his say tonight. We've still got many more callers to come. I know they're all waiting backstage patiently. Thank you. We will get to you. People smash that. What are we on like, likes anyway right now? We're on five. Listen, we're on nearly 600. Let's get this to 750 while Igal is on the air. Show some Igal some love, people. Let's do it. Igal, how you doing, mate? I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling. My, my, team's, still, my team's still sitting in. My team's, my team's sitting in fourth. My team's sitting in fourth. You guys, you guys still need to catch us. We've got a point in hand. You know what? It's, uh, there's a lot to talk about. How disgraceful of a performance overall the team had. Absolutely pissed at the performance the team had. In the, uh, and the fact that the fact that we came out. There's there's numerous things I could touch on. There's numerous things I could touch on. But let me begin by saying this. Number one, when it, uh, from the opening minute we were not quick enough with the ball. We were wasteful in possession, and we and we and we did not look like we were, we did not look like we we're up for the occasion. First, uh, and also the way that we set up, I did not want Cedric going up against Son. I always thought we were going to put Tommy Asu up against Son. So from the jump, I thought that was a mistake Mikel Arteta made. He should have he shouldn't have done that. Ben White wasn't ready for this game, so obviously he wasn't going to play. I thought we should have gone to a three at the back. We didn't do that. That's on Mikel Arteta. A girl, a girl, a girl, a girl. We've just lost the North London derby. I get your points, but come, we've just fucking been humiliated at Tottenham's ground. Why are you just so chill about this? Come on. I know that we're, we're one point in fourth, but come on. Come on. I'm, this I'm, goal, I'm more pissed off. I'm more pissed off at the referee. I'm more pissed oh, off oh, at the oh, performance oh, overall oh, throughout the whole team. Oh, I'm more pissed off. Okay, I'm more pissed yeah. off. I'm more Why? pissed off that our players, our players didn't didn't go for it in the second half and at least try to do something and we we completely capitulated in the first couple hey, of minutes. Sorry, let's go, let's go back a minute. Step back a minute. When you say blaming the referee, what did the referee do wrong tonight? How did the referee ruin the game in your opinion? Paul Tierney had no control of the game. He he that 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 penalty, if it wasn't if he didn't call it, VR wouldn't have overturned it. It's a 50-50 challenge. These things happen completely. I get it. He missed. He missed. Han Min Son should have been sent off. He elbowed Rob Holding in the face while they were in the tussle on the ground. Didn't even see it. Didn't even look at it. Didn't even uh, go back at it. Then Rob Holding gets sent off for another 50-50 challenge. So you know what? I get things don't go your way, but he had no control of the game from the beginning to the end. And, it's, okay. and, and, what, and what he had to do to gain control of the game was he sent Rob Holding off to try to gain control of the game. But at that point, he ruined the whole game. Done and done. So you, so let me just ask you a question. So first, on Rob Holding, you don't think that that was deserved of a, a second yellow when he puts the arm out in the guy's face? 
I think uh, I think of course you that's a 50-50 and he, you could easily give well, it. Hang on, why is that, why is that, that's not hang on the girl, that's what that's not a 50-50 tackle. Okay. A 50-50 tackle bring it back then. Bring it back. Hang on, a 50-50 tackle is when two okay. players go for the I same will, ball at the I same will, time. I will I will say this. Rob Holding should have probably uh, gotten a yellow for that, but also at the same time, elbowing someone in the head as they're as they're sitting down, that's a straight red. Sun should have been sent off. And in terms of the penalty, you're saying that the, the, the push in the back wasn't a penalty. I'm saying if if it, if it wasn't called, it wouldn't have been overturned and given. Well, this one was that you, you literally got a penalty against Man United that wasn't given that was overturned. Say it again. You, you got a penalty against Man United three weeks ago for the we exact scored, same thing. We scored from a, we scored. We went on to score. It's different. Why is it that different? Would've, that would have that would have went on to be a corner. The only reason why they did they did that. There's a difference in that situation. It's not the same. Why? No, the, 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 both. Hang on. You just said it's that. It's not the same. You're trying to draw comparisons. No, to no, 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 no. Why is it not the same? Listen. Why is I'm the foul excusing, different? I'm not excusing the overall performance based on that one incident. We still ended up going on to lose that uh, in the grand scheme of things. That The thing that messed up the game is they went on to send off one person for an elbow, but they didn't send off the other person for a straight elbow to the face. Well, the thing is, they both elbowed. So Son should have mm -hmm. got a yellow card maybe. But you've got to look at your own players here, I think, Egal, because I am. That's the, I am. That's the dirty, that's no, you're not looking at your own players because you're blaming the referee. I... I'm not putting everything on the referee. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. I am saying that right there is the reason why the referee is a disgrace and he ruined the game because he had no control of the game. He went on to give one person a red card for a similar incident. The man didn't even book him. That so is straight so negligence. The, and how is this man is a referee after that incident where the man fully elbowed him in the face as he's sitting down and you're telling me that I'm the crazy one. This guy is an absolute fool. He doesn't deserve to be a referee. He's not done it once. He's not done it twice. That first half, honestly, the penalty, he tried to give a penalty when their own player, when a Spurs player, handballed it in their own box. He thought it was an Arsenal player. He's going to give a penalty. Honestly, this referee is a joke. But guess what? But guess what? The Our players also were a joke in, in certain sense because we messed up ourselves. But personally, I, I don't give a shit anymore. I've said, forget this game. It's done. At halftime, the game was finished. So that's why I don't care no more. I've moved on. Guess what? We're still one point ahead of you. You still need to win your two games. Can you do it? That's the question I have. To talk <laughs> Can you do it? Because on my end, I don't care. I don't care anymore. This game is done. This game happened. I am not going to invest any more energy in this game anymore. I'm moving on to the next game. I believe in my team. No excuses, even with injuries. I'm not going to come on any of these streams afterwards and say, context, oh, there's excuses. No. We don't get top four. No excuses. It's in our hand. We had a four-point advantage with three games remaining. I don't see Tottenham going out and not dropping points. Even if we drop points from here on end, I still believe they're going to drop points. I still believe this team can get top four. And I still believe we're going to hear the Champions League music at the end of the season. The Champions! You're going to hear it! And you can't do nothing about it. Keep chatting shit. Egal, <laughs> you just said you're not going to give any excuses, but ran it about the referee ruining the game. You've literally just sat there and given excuses for your team. If you were equally as annoyed with your players, where's the energy for your, again, the 13th red card under Mikel Arteta, another red card for silly, ill-disciplined behavior, another stupid penalty given away. Your team will cost it, end up costing, it could end up costing itself a top four place. Why is there no energy from you to your football club? Where are your standards for your own players, your own manager and your own football club? My standards are that we're. Uh, my standard is that I still believe this team is going to get it from here. I generally still believe we're still going to do it, and I feel like this one game is not going to derail me from my from the end goal. End goal is guess what? It's still in our hands. One win for a uh, one loss to ta uh, to Tottenham. Yes, it, it messes it up because if we would have drawn, we would have only needed one win. If we would have won, we would have solidified it. But now we still we we just need to go beat Newcastle, beat Everton, and at the end of the day, our season has still been a good season. And, and are you are you confident you'll do that? Are you confident that I you'll go confident. away Monday night football and beat Newcastle? I am confident in my team. It's uh, the pressure's on Spurs. The next game, you guys play the next game. Pressure's on you right now. Let's see what after they that do. performance. After that performance, you're you're back in that team. After that performance, it was Listen. an awful London dark. Hold on, hold on. I'll just let you rant for about five minutes. So you're clearly Go rattled. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, you've literally ranted for five minutes about the referee and all that. You haven't once held any of your players to account. Cedric holding anything like that. All you've done is blame a, a ref with your tinfoil hat, as you always do. You always look outwards. Something on the ground. I can understand. I've said that it could possibly be a red, mm -hmm. but 
Paul uh, Tierney, who doesn't see it, is then not in charge of it. It's VAR. It's not Tierney. The ref didn't lose control of that game. Holding gives him no excuse, no reason. To, like he's got nothing left to do. When um, Son's running, then Holding looks for Son and puts his arm in the face. That's on holding. It's not on the referee ruining the game. Cedric, I, I even I said to Colleen, I don't think that was a penalty, but it went his mm. way. But because Cedric gives him no choice. You're blaming no, the referee. I'm... Arsenal fans do this all the time. You, when you win, you're the most amazing team in the world. When you lose, it's referees, it's this, it's that, it's the other. Just admit that you were no good tonight. The North London derby where it meant something and you bottled it. Just say it. It's Just lay it out. You'll feel better because you're keeping it all in, bottled up inside. Just you lay it out. I've, I, you clearly are not listening. I've said our players throughout the game, in the grand scheme of things, absolutely messed up the game. But the referee also had the part to play, and Mikel Arteta also has the part to play. Uh, there's very, many variables, and there's many people you can blame. I'm not blaming one. I'm blaming all three. Do you blame Arteta? Of course, because he put out the team, but it's not all on him. It's also the players and the situations that they put, uh, the, the dumb situations they put themselves in. But he clearly sent sent him out, riled up to to like get in Spurs' face, and then obviously when it escalated and it carried on, he didn't then stop him from doing it, which cost you the game because you got a man sent off. A one nil in a North London derby, anything can happen. But when you lose that man and you go two 0 down, and he done nothing, he just stood there with his arms crossed, looking into the distance, and he's meant to be the second thing? coming of Pep. He's the second coming of nothing. Listen, you could you could you could keep make fun you can keep make fun of uh, make fun of Arteta as much as you want. Obviously, you know your manager right now. You have a top manager. Guess what? At, in January, when when you guys sign Antonio Conte, we heard that you guys are going to get top four because you have Antonio Conte. If you don't get top four and you have a world class manager, we're going to have to see what happens. Yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> but at the end of the day, next season we'll go again. You still have Arteta. You still have a a, a young weak team that mentally. You want to know I generally believe it doesn't matter what happens this season. Antonio Conte is still going to leave Tottenham at the end of the season if you guys don't give him that money. And if he gets the opportunity to go to PSG, that guy's bouncing. And Arteta can have a mediocre season and, and possibly get you back to top four, which you were under Wenger, and then get rewarded with another three-year contract. You know something? Arteta's accomplished, more. Arteta's accomplished more with Arsenal than Pochettino did, and he's one of your greatest ever managers for the last 10 years, so noise it. Okay, okay, but then where's it going to get you back to? Arsenal were the pinnacle of football, like when Thierry was there, winning trophies, invincible and everything like that. And Arsenal fans are now excited to get back to top four, which you were at, like, under Wenger. You've fallen that far so. back and you're happy to accept what you were originally wanting to ask Wenger out for. No, no, no. no, no. Makes Deservedly no sense. so. Deservedly so. Because re realistically, you have to look at how far we've fallen and say to yourself, you know what, gradual progression, getting back into the Champions League this season is a good progression. And guess what? You wouldn't understand any success because you have no success. So it's a hypocritical term coming from you. I as understand a success because I want my team to win about, trophies. You're happy about, with both. Trying to talk about our standards where your standards are on the yeah. floor yourselves. Guys, great conversation, great debate. There's a super chat here for you, Agal. I need to put it. Says, didn't Agal say he wasn't going to blame refs anymore a few weeks ago, and yeah. now he's blaming the refs? Stop <laughs> embarrassing Listen, yourself. I'm not embarrassing says. myself because I'm being consistent here. I'm saying I'm blaming all three. Toward the, uh, there's many variables. There's many variables. There's many variables, and I'm mentioning all three. I can't mention all three. Am I supposed to just ignore it? Uh, do you know what I think? Do you know what I would say, Gal, you're absolutely right to mention all three. My view, after listening to your voice, is. Uh, it's like a half-hearted attempt of criticising and then a complete meltdown rant about a referee that, by the way, tonight, I think got nearly every single decision spot on in the letter of the law. Egal, it's great talking to you, though, my friend. You always show up, win, lose, or draw. Top man. Uh, we'll chat again soon, brother. See you, Egal. Bye. Take, Bye. take care, my guy. Thank you very much. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right. Play the game. Win it light. Have no shame. No time for the pain, with the grind, I could change in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it like I never miss that pack, taking big swings, dish ham. And man, 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 lucky gal there. So I had to play it. The Giza, it, listen, he, he, he's entitled to his opinions. We've got some super chats here. Uh, softest penalty ever, Son should be an Olympic diver. Let me say about the penalty. I'm being a bit salty tonight. Mm. I thought it was very soft. But the, max, the fact is that three weeks ago, Arsenal got one, two weeks ago maybe, I, don't, I can't remember now, maybe three weeks, they got one that was almost identical against Manchester United. And this is what I love about football. It goes around and it comes around very, very quickly. That's why I've always been someone that really and truly, when we get like a lucky decision or a fluky goal, I like the tennis approach. You know when a tennis player gets a point by like mm -hmm. hitting the letter and it falls down, they apologize for getting the point. Mm -hmm. Football fans have this, this, this want of like gloating about it and it always bites you in the backside, my friend.
Per here says, these are the kind of games that explain why I've been Arteta out since 2019. I don't care about being proven right. I just want a proper manager. Uh, gave Arteta, give Arteta a 100-year contract. Long may it continue. <laughs> Uh, these Arteta tears taste delish. Cheers, everybody. Egal United under Oli didn't um, keep, sorry, didn't didn't need firing up against City. Respect and reward Arteta for celebrating third loser um, as a trophy uh, is what said there by Waira. Um, Egal is so disingenuous. And I have to say, I like Egal. Everyone knows I've got time for him, but I, I did feel he was... Egal's got this thing. He's part, of, he's part of an Arsenal cult. It's like whenever they lose a game, they come on and they put this face on, they put this mask on and go, it's all okay. We're all fine. There's no problems. But you know, like the lips go in. You know, when someone's trying to hold it in, like uh, it's, it doesn't bother me at all. But if they were winning, it would be, come outside, Tottenham. But uh, there we go. But listen, man's entitled to his opinion. Next on the show, uh, we're going to get uh, Gunner Souls on. Jerome's coming on. Uh, we've got to, uh, some more people backstage. Well, Mo's back there as well. But Gunner Souls is on next. What are you saying, mate? I don't know. Um, a lot of emotions being held back. Um, Trying to keep it calm, really, because there are two games to go, big games. But they don't mean anything to me anymore because this is the game I wanted it in. If we get top four, nice one. It genuinely is. It's not going to bother me anymore because I wanted the team to show me something today. I wanted them to show me that everything we fucking said about them is actually right. That we backed them to say the culture's changed, the mentality's changed, that actually they give a damn. But today they didn't show none of that. It's a penalty. It doesn't fucking matter if it went against you, if it went for you. You don't lose your head because one okay. decision didn't go your way. Let's, mm -hmm. let's run with it. The referee gave that because it's corrupt and it's fixed. Let's run with it. Who the mm -hmm. fuck cares? You're 1-0 down in a North London derby. It's not 90 minutes. It's 20 minutes in the game. In a game that you can come back in, why lose your head? That you know, you know, holding right. It pissed me off because you could see the game plan. You could see the fact they wanted to rile us up. They wanted to get a reaction because guess what? We bloody do every single time. Get ourselves a yellow card that doesn't mean anything. Get ourselves red cards that don't mean anything, and we didn't need to get. We always give the referee. The opportunity to do it. It doesn't matter. I know people are saying, but he came out with it quick. Who the hell cares? Why give them the reason to even pull that card out? Did Holding need to do what he did? No. Exactly. Was Son doing anything? Where was Son going into fucking open space? Nowhere. So why do it? I don't get it. And the thing is, people want to come out and say it's Arteta's fault. Yes, he got decisions wrong. Yes, he should have played Tommy Asu at right back. Yes, he should have done that. But the reality is, right, I don't think he set them out wrong. I feel like Cedric has played well enough to understand, okay, we'll play him there. Why was clearly not fit, otherwise he would have played. But you come out, look, Rob Holding, right, he's come through the ranks. He's not through the ranks. We bought him for six million, but he's been at the club long enough to understand what the North London derby means. He's been here for far enough. Wenger's trusted him, bought him in from the Wenger time. So he's definitely been here for about five seasons. If you're telling me you've not understood what this game means to Arsenal fans, you're not fit for the club. And then on top of that, we didn't get a reaction after that. We came mm -hmm. in. We were like 1-0, fine, okay, it's a red card, whatever, okay, let's just keep it tight. Let's go 1-0 into half-time minimum. Let's not, let's not even look at a comeback for a second. What do we do? To, literally, the next move that happens, they go and score. Why? Just for once, just for once, show us that mentality. Like, we've been saying it, you've been talking about it, you've shown it as well. It's not like they haven't shown it us, because they bounce back, they put five game wins together, they've proven to us that actually, yeah, we, we are something. But when it's mattered to the fans, when it's like the fans have gone deep in, because I have, I've said it all week long, we are going to beat them. Alan knows this. I've said it to them because nothing but a win. If we win the next two games, good, fucking great. But now I'm putting that pressure on you again because for me, I don't care. I'm not celebrating if we get top four against Newcastle or Everton because you fucked it because the fans wanted it today. Show us that you can do something before the season ends. And you had an opportunity, a prime opportunity. No disrespect to Spurs, but this Spurs side is probably one of the worst you're going to see because Conte is going to go into that summer and he's going to get his players in. 
you're telling me it's going to be easier next season. Ten Hag's coming in, and he's going to yeah. bring his players in. Conte's you know going to bring his players in. Donna, do you know, do you know what I say you're right about on one thing? Gunas, 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 oh, sorry. The way I've seen, the way Arsenal fans are talking about the, the business that Man United are linked to in the market and hoping and banking that Antonio Conte leaves, that shows me, again, that there isn't the faith in Arteta that people portray in certain tweets and messages and what they say. Because if Arteta has taken you back to the promised land, why such anger and like hope that, Arte that Conte leaves, that Man United buy the wrong players for Eric Ten Hag? Because what we do is irrelevant if Mikel Arteta is the right guy. If he's taking you back to where you're... If it's inevitable that you're getting back to the top, there wouldn't be the concentration on everybody else if, if you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, you've got to look at your own law and you, you forget about what other people are doing. I agree with that whole notion, but at the same time... You've got to understand that teams aren't going to get shitter. Like, we've improved, right? Like, we can see that we've improved as a team, as an 11. What makes what, what makes anyone think that Spurs have a billion-pound stadium? You know, Tottenham, um, United have brought in one of the most up-and-coming managers who's got something to prove because he's only done it at Ajax, but he's an understudy of Pep, so we've got two students of Pep. If we want to run Arteta as this Pep, you know, student, we've got to give Ten Hag. Ten Hag comes with experience, but under Pep as well. So he's automatically should be ranked higher anyway. So I don't get it, man. I don't know whether people think De Jong is going to be your savior or not. I don't think that alone is what you need. But who who says that's it? United are notorious for spending money. Like they're not going to just go De Jong. Yeah, that's it. Let's that's it. They've uh, restructured. Mate, this is their window to trust the fans back. So I completely agree with what you where, where you're coming from. If you make the top four, it's worth celebrating and being happy. But this this, this weird notion of we're clear of the other everybody else, I, I just think it's a little bit premature. And you, and I get what you're saying. Souls, great call, my friend. Good rant. Good to get it off your chest. We'll speak again soon, my friend. Thank you very much. In D, I've got a message here. I've got a play from <laughs> Lee Gunner that he sent me. Just this, this, listen up. Sorry, I missed the wrong button. Yes, Terence, what are you telling me? You're telling me now, yeah? Yeah, deserves more respect, yeah? You're going to put that as your title tonight on your show. I'll tell you, it deserves more respect. You waster. I'm coming for you Tuesday. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't happy. He ain't happy. We'll see you straight facts Tuesday, Mr. Gunner, I'm sure. We are going to speak to some more Gunners. We've got the Saracen Gunner waiting backstage for us. Uh, who else? Young Tommy's there. There's uh, 876 Good Gunner. Uh, Mo's coming on next. Then we're getting Jerome on, who's a Tottenham fan. We're going to hear from a neutral. We're going to hear from a neutral now. Mo, what are you saying, mate? A couple of things. These Arsenal fans are plastic. A couple of weeks ago, everybody was just praising Arteta, get this contract in and all this shit. The club is moving forward. And then one bad game and everybody just losing their head. Yes, they had a terrible game. The plan didn't work. But the players let the manager down and nobody can just say otherwise. The he, they started the game on the front foot. Yes, they played into Conti's hands. Yes, Conti prefers the team to come at them. But Spurs players could not get the ball out of their ha halfway line in the first five, 10 minutes. And in the stadium, and everybody can tell you this, and I was watching a lot of stories, they clapped, they cheered when Spurs got the first ball in Arsenal's half after eight minutes. That means the manager had a plan, but all these Arsenal fans talk about the manager, the manager, the manager. Give this manager some time, give this manager players. But all these Arsenal fans talking about, we have the youngest team. This is why you need experience on the field. Don't just praise the club for having the youngest team in, in, in the starting lineup in the league. You need experience. And your mm -hmm. experienced players let you down every freaking day. This soccer guy is not a leader. He can't lead a team. He loses his head all the time. The manager on the touchline doesn't talk enough. This club needs experience, doesn't need young players, doesn't need you praising these players and making them starting like Martinelli. Great player, Saka, great player, Smith Rowe, Odegaard. You can't have this guy Odegaard as your captain. You need someone mm -hmm. that has 28, 30 years old as a captain. And do not blame it only on the manager, blame it on everybody else in this club. And for Conte, top manager, everything that he planned for worked, even without his main defender today. He played a good game. Everybody played. Even Sanchez looked good today. Surprise, surprise. And <laughs> Harry Kane and, and Son. I'm an Egyptian. Young man's son. Best player in the league. No question today. Effective. 
everything went through him. Yes, Harry Kane is a phenomenal forward, but this guy, young man, son, get him out of Tottenham. Get on Tottenham. He needs trophies as well as much as Harry Kane. Some big club come for this guy, pay the top money because this guy, the ceiling, like he will be phenomenal if he goes to like. I'm sorry if he goes to a club that is. Winning trophies and challenging for trophies. A lot of clubs need a left winger. Raheem Sterling is leaving. Maybe they get him instead of Saka. But I Antonio Conte, he's not going to shut yeah, up. I'm not... sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alan. But this guy is a top-notch player. Like, he's unplayable today. He needs to go to a club that is going to spend money, get the squad that will uh, win trophies and stuff. I'm sorry, Alan. You know, your it's club, interesting. Your... Uh, 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 Mo, just to jump in real quickly, this graphic I'm about to put up, it, there's one more goal to add to this because, of course, he scored tonight. But I, I, I was sent this on Monday, so it's just uploading. It's taking a little bit of time. But this is Son versus Salah this season in the Prem. It's 21 non-penalty goals now from a less expected goals. He's got less assists. As a, you know, chance creation is high. That is, like, again, Son's just not spoken about by very many people about how good he is as a player. Now, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not agreeing that he's the best player in the league, but he is absolutely sensational, Hunmin Son. That there's no doubt about it. And he just he just keeps scoring and getting better and better. I want to ask your opinion, Mo. Who's making the top four? Spurs or pressure, Arsenal? Pressure is on Arsenal. I think Antonio Conte will get them over the line. This team without their defense, they're gonna crumble against Newcastle. They're playing away. And I think if even Tottenham get one point. Against Burnley, they're going to have 11 goals ahead of Arsenal with the same points. I don't see Arsenal making it unless something dramatic happens. But I gave it 80 to 20 to Spurs making it top four. Wow, there we go. Mo, thanks for being patient and waiting. Top man for coming on and having your say. Really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. He redeemed himself that comment. After it, yeah, he, he, he did. Uh, struggling to get fourth playing one game a week is what Mr. Waffle says. Are you worried, Colleen, about that next season? Two games a week. Are you worried about how Arteta is going to manage it? I just feel so deflated after that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, it, when he has been in Europe, it hasn't been great. And we, when we've been in Europe, we have finished eighth as well. So he does have a lot to prove. And we are on this project, but it's not always linear. And we need to see how far he can take us because he might not take us to the pinnacle. Yeah, Jay here says, I feel like he, I think he's talking about a gal here, is lying to himself more and more, uh, more than anyone else. Uh, he believes what he is saying. Uh, this guy is the epitome of a deluded Arsenal fan. Look, it, it gals entitled to his opinions, you know, and everything else. I think the blaming of the referees is just, I, I'll be blunt, it's so stereotypical of top gooners like Egal. They 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 never, mm. they might say, oh, we were poor. It's almost like, yeah, we weren't great today. We were really poor today. But the referee, the, 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 the energy for me is off in terms of the direction that it goes in. Comment here says, the ref completely destroyed the game. That pen was the softest I've ever seen. But worst of all yeah. uh, was Holdings first yellow. It was non-existent. The ref has no idea what he's doing or does he? No. Suggesting there, Colleen, that you were robbed by the referee. No, it's ridiculous. Mm. Holding made two challenges leading up to his first yellow card. It was yeah. on the third, right? And of course, you're going to expect some yeah. challenge. It's a North London. It gets a bit bitty. Yeah. However, use your head. So that's on holding. Secondly, even if it was, it was a penalty, it was soft, but it was a penalty, even, whether you want to debate it or not, it's done and dusted. You're only one nil down. What, yeah. 20 minutes gone? Show a bit of something. Like, if you're going to crumble like that, then should we be in the Champions League? Yeah. Should we really be in the Champions League? It's, it's not just that. The amount of times I watch a North London derby and the team that scores first normally ends up losing. Mm -hmm. So you're not out of the game at 1-0 and for Arsenal to crumble and just to make stupid mistakes and look to put one on Son rather mm. than... For actually... my, one of our most experienced exactly. players out there. Yeah. It's and just ridiculous. I, I go back to... Uh, in the comments, you guys may remember it. There was an off-the-ball incident where a player went to run through. I think it might... It was I, Wolves. I was here. It you. Wolves. It was, it was Wolves. Ben White Wolves. And yeah. Ben White was on a yellow card. He could have been sent off. And I just remember Gunas celebrating it. And we said it in the studio at the mm. time. We said it on the stream afterwards. Like, don't celebrate that type of thing because you're empowering the players to do stupidness on the football pitch. They go, well, I'm getting... And this is a normal human instinct. You know, you, you, your friend always goes too far on a night out. It's because everybody goads them on and they end up going one step too far and doing something silly. Yeah. That's what happened tonight. And it, again, it's kind of on the fans. Hold your players to account. Yeah. There's a super chat here that says, can't blame the ref when everybody um, has the same referees. Well, unless you think it's 
a conspiracy, which Arsenal fans yeah. do, but they had too many decisions go their way. Like there was a conspiracy. Mm. There's no way VAR overturns that double that, that two footed tackle the other day. If there's a conspiracy, they would have not done it. And that's that's the point. It's if the conspiracy exists, there's no way that they'd have let Arsenal get anywhere near top four. They'd have yeah. ruled out things, done other stuff. Super Chat here says, uh, score flatters Arsenal today. Mm. Uh, we missed sitters from Tyrone. That is, that is very, very true as well, no doubt. Jerome's on now. Big Tottenham fan. What are you saying, brother? Hey, Terry. Okay. A guy just got me triggered today. I mean, like, seriously, man. You come up. I respect what, whenever he has something to say. But today, all your reason was piss poor, my man. And I'm talking straight to you, Egal. Everything you said was piss piss poor today i mean like blaming the ref are you being serious like the ref got every single thing right and if you're gonna say this was not a penalty come on man seriously if son get the header it was a header on goal so pretty much that is a full-on penalty okay there's nothing to say about it and then to say that son should have got like a yellow card there's var for what what for there was nothing there. Son don't, did not even touch him. Okay? Let's just make this thing clear. Everything he said was just piss poor. All right? Your team came to a North London derby, and everybody was talking about it was the biggest North London derby I was ever going to have, which is the biggest lo North London der derby ever. But it was just shit. Your team came in and came with a whimper. They were shit. All right, and all respect to Colleen as well, because she's the only one on here that was actually real pissed off and didn't come up with any reason at all and didn't give her team any freaking reasons as to why they came to this North, North London Derby and just did nothing out of this. All right, that's all I have to say today because don't talk about and certainly all of you Arsenal fans are going, oh, it's all doom and gloom. Would you beat Chelsea? You beat like a Chelsea that didn't do anything. You beat like a piss pool United, and you are oh, we are the best team in the world, best youngest team in England. And now you're all like what? Now the old doom and gloom, not too sure if you're gonna win top four and everything. You come on. We all shit. None of us deserve to be in the Champions League. All right? So shut the hell up. I'm so sick of you turning to Arsenal fan going, oh, whenever we win, and this guy, whenever I don't know who the fuck his name is, was in his car going, oh, best young team in the world. Oh, Tottenham, no, you're shit. And blah, blah, blah. We're the best youngest young team in the world. And we're going to be winning. And we can hear Champions League. Shut the hell up, man. You don't deserve anything. The same as us, we don't deserve that Champions League. So shut up. Unless you improve your team, then you can get something out of this. If you want to go to the Champions League next season, yeah, go for it and get embarrassed as you will always have. All right? So just shut up and just talking nonsense. When your team plays shit, just save your shit. All right? <laughs> That's all I have to say to you guys. Fucking hell, man. I like that. Do you know what I'm gonna? Do you know what I'm gonna say to that, Jerome? We've been calling for this on the terrace for ages. Fans being fans, not politicians. Not yeah. you know, not ducking questions. Your fans out here. I get if you're hosting something. I get if you're like you know, media trained professional. You have got to hold it in. When you're a fan, well done and thank you for being a, a fan, Jerome. Love it, my friend. We'll speak again soon, brother. See ya. Take care. Take yeah. care. I love the bit goes, we're all oh, shit. <laughs> but it, it, is kind of, it, it is so it is so true though, isn't it? Like it's one of the things, again, I've seen improvements in Arsenal this year, but when I've seen people act like, oh, you know, we've we've left, we've left Tottenham and, and Man United behind. So, you really haven't. No. You really haven't left us behind in the grand scheme of things. It's a, a, a calm down thing, you know, for me. Uh, young Tommy's come in on the show now to have you. Actually, no, uh, Saris and Guna, then young Tommy, uh, and then eight eight seven six Guna. Bring that energy, people. It's what we need. Uh, Saras and Goon is here. What are you saying, mate? Yes, bro. I think Jerome was talking about that handsome chap in the car. That was me. And I still maintain we've got the best young team. So how about that, yeah? We've got the best young team in the whole of Europe, probably the best in the world. It was a blip today, right? Let's just, let's just say this Tottenham team, a lot of them, have been playing in the Champions League, the bad Champions League experience. You have got a little bit. What we saw today was an inexperienced team that lost their heads, and it, there is no excuse for it. But the saddest bit is it was lost by a player who has got the experience, Rob Holding. He completely lost it, and the game was effectively over. I don't care what people say. This is nothing to do with Arteta. 
This is nothing to do with Arteta. He set the team up. Everyone can't blame him for picking Rob Holding. He's been playing well. He was excellent against West Ham, right? We started off really well in the first line. Even that gentleman before him said eight minutes, they didn't even get into a half. Rob Holding, I don't know whether it's because Ben White was back or whether the occasion got to him, but he could have been sent off about four times, uh, to be honest with you. And as soon as you go down to 10 men against Son and Kane, you know, it's always going to be a struggle. The game was over. And I'm just happy, like, we've got it, kept it to three because it could have been more. You know what I mean? It was a blip. We move on. We're still going to get top four. Do you really think it was a blip in terms of we've got two games good. left and t- yeah. the manner and the way we lost? I mean, we've lost like this before this season. You know, it's not, I don't know if it's a blip. It feels like it's a mentality thing. And I'm not saying it what can't change. As you say, it's a young squad, but do you think it's just going to go normal against Newcastle? I think, listen, we got. We, we're a young squad. It's going to go up and down, up and down. Yeah. Yeah, but the right. next two games, though, the next two games, Newcastle we, away. We, we lost three games in a row at the start of the season. The team and we could back. lose three we, games in a row we, now because we did we that. Could, but we could also come back. We, 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 no one expected us to beat Chelsea, Manchester United, West Ham. We did it, and uh, and I think the way that Arteta's interview was after the game, he said it. He said, "Look, he didn't want to come out and criticize the referee, but." I'm sorry, Pete, the guy was getting a lot of stick in, in there, but the referee did spoil it because I don't care what you say, that was not a penalty, yeah? It was, I think what's happened is this Tierney, whatever, Paul Tierney's watched when Cedric got away with one against Manchester United and he thought, you know what, referee union, we'll equal it out or we'll give him a soft penalty. That was not a penalty. And before the second goal, yeah, um, Saka was fouled by Hjord Hoiberg before it went into a corner. That wasn't given and that led to the second goal. But ultimately, it was Rob Holding that let us down today. And I'm really, really disappointed with that. But the second half, we showed spirit. We hung in there. It could have been worse. Do you know what I mean? It could have been worse. If Odegaard had taken his two chances, yeah, we could have been back in the game. So yeah, but I if, if some bots were candy and nuts, we would all have a great Christmas, though. It wasn't the case, though. <laughs> it, just wasn't, it just wasn't the case. You're going to get that with the young team. I just want to know why you're so, why you're so, you know, why you're so calm and thinking that we're going to actually bounce back against Newcastle. I just, I want you to make me believe because I've got no belief that we're going to bounce back in a convincing way against Newcastle. We're going to bounce back against Newcastle. Yeah. Number one, it's not a North London derby, so that kind of pressure that that usually you find in North London derby and 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 their young team that we don't have that experience yet. Uh, that's not out of the way. So it's a different game. Number two, we've got an excellent record at Newcastle, yeah? And you could check the stats and you could check we're doing very, very well. Number three, they know exactly what they need to do. Just six points. Three games, I think we're going to smack Everton at home. Mm. The Emirates is, is a fortress for us. So effectively, we beat Newcastle, we're in Champions League. Newcastle, number four, aren't necessarily going to be up for that. You know, they've, they're, they're safe, they, you know, they're going to be a few players that might. We get a couple of early goals. Mm-hmm. They capitulate. Look what Tottenham. And I hear what you're. Say, I hear what you're saying, and I think you're 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 statistically right. We we just need to win those games, but we just needed to win today. No, so, no today was a t- today was a different game. Today, if anything, today I, I was a was a, 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 a better chance. It was a North London derby. Wait, it was a course, North London derby. I took a day off work. I grew up right next to the <laughs> stadium. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't, I, there was no point of me being at work because I couldn't concentrate. Do you understand? I took a day off work for this. This is my whole, in fact, since Sunday, this is the only thing I've been looking forward to, yeah? Right? And Rob Holding sport it today. And that's the reality. Obviously, Arteta is going to protect him. He's blaming the referee as well. And he doesn't want to come out and say exactly what he thinks. But I do think there is a point with the, with the referee. There was a number of decisions that went against us. We started off well. And I don't think... That's not a fair, accurate assessment of a North London derby. People think, oh, you smoked us. You, you didn't smoke us, bro. We they were, did. We were 3-0, smoking. we did smoke you. No, no, you didn't. We you did. didn't smoke Also, us. hold on, hold on. Wait, this. one second, hold on. You said about you started uh, the great, uh, great like uh, uh, the North London derby started great. Minutes. Eight minutes. Does the, does the game last eight minutes or does it last 90? You, you, did, you didn't even get into a half until... But then when we did, minutes, yeah? gave away a penalty, yeah. you got a red card, and that, gave and away other goals, you lost 3-0. You were and also you said about you've got the best, world, the best young team in world football, but then you also said you only perform when the pressure's not on you. So you haven't got the best team in no. world football because you crumble under well, the pressure. We, we're, we've Tierney's out. We've got Tierney out. 
We got every a team goes through injuries in that. You make excuses. Out, who's our highest paced player? No, it's not an excuse. We've got but two of our best players out. Yeah, right. And we, we had we had our full team, we would smoke yeah. you. Look what happened at the Emirates, bro. We, hold we on, hold on, hold on. Two wait, differently. Wait, wait, wait. So, Romero was missing today. We had um, Sanchez. Dyer and Davies, and you could not cause that defense. You could have properly. Cannavaro, bro. It don't bother me, man. You can have Prime Maldini. Would okay, smoke, okay, but our best defender, and who everyone says Spurs are a rubbish team, we're rubbish at the back. We didn't have our best defender by a clear mile. Dyer gets laughed at, Sanchez gets laughed at, Davies gets laughed at. With, I, I, I laugh at them as well because I think they're rubbish, and you couldn't get near us. And you're meant to why be the best. You, why could get why, why why could London get Derby, you? and you crumbled? Because but you're making excuses. Holding, holding sport here. And and a referee gave you a soft penalty, holding sport it. That's that's why we didn't get near you. How did you have all well, our full pen? You can't so, make so, that assessment. We can't be that assessment. You said you played eight, eight eight minutes really well. You said you got the best young team and we're holding and well, how many players it. did we have? No, how Cedric spoiled it by giving away a stupid penalty. Holding no, then wanted penalty. to just rough up Son and he got caught and all that. Your most experienced player. I've said this, when Arsenal get to this point of the season, you will see how we were when we were with a young team with Pochettino. We would crumble under the pressure. And you're going to do it. You're going to, you're, you're going, going to crumble under the pressure. We're, we're Arteta's gonna, not good get enough. Get hold on, hold on. Arteta's, Arteta's not good enough. Uh, no, good enough, good enough. To, to do what? What's Arteta, he, what's he listen, good enough to do? We're, we're nearly top four and we haven't had a striker for most of the season. Yeah? Our best striker, our best player for the last three years decided to leave us for Barcelona because he couldn't handle the pressure and he couldn't d deal with the discipline. Yeah, We've had internal disputes and we're still nearly in the chop for what he's done is unbelievable. We're in Europe that's secured. Yeah, I'm so proud of what Arteta's done and I, and I hate these fans that are coming on calling Arteta. How's it his fault Rob Holdings lost his head? Yeah, come on, man. Grow up. Uh, good, good, good. Listen, Saracen Guna. I understand your passion. I would say this, 13 red cards since he's been there. I think you have to look at the way the team plays. But I'll get you back in your boys in the next couple of games. And it's a pleasure speaking again, mate, and we'll chat again Respect, soon. Bro. Top, Definitely. top man. Thank you very much indeed. Viewers, keep hitting that like button for us. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace. What we are now likewise? We must be near a 1,000. Nearly on a 1,000 likes while we're live, which is amazing. So keep hitting that button. Next on the show, we're going to go to J4, who's a Spurs fan, who's been at the game tonight. What are you saying, my friend? Mm. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I was just driving. I was just pulled over to the oh, side. Look at that grin off the screen, man. <laughs> just, just, just for Colleen, we'll put it in big. There we go. <laughs> there, there we go. Um, but yeah, at the game I was, um, it was, fuck, it was scenes. Um, scenes. Never heard it, seen an atmosphere like that at the lane. Um, and it's not something that I expected. Something that I've stayed consistent on for not just this week, probably months that when Arsenal come to the lane, they just have trouble. Two wins in 18 years um, away against Tottenham. The record's very telling. They was never going to come today and get... Well, they were never going to come and win. They were coming for a draw. And and to me personally, you could see the doubt in not just the Arsenal fans, but in the Arsenal team themselves. I mean, you saw once they went, for, uh, they lost um, Holding. Where was White? He didn't even make the adjustments to bring any centre-back on. Me personally... I thought the game w was over from what? From that first goal, game was done. Harry Kane penalty is typical North London derby, ain't it? He's always going to get one. Um, but yeah, man, it, it was uh, it was a good game. A game which Arsenal, um, it, it's hard to say. It, it, it's hard to say because I, I want to really start running off and saying Champions League's done. Champions League's done. Because I think that they're going to drop points against Newcastle. But I don't want to get too excited because it's not in our hands. Unfortunately, it's not in our hands. But just to go back to tonight, Harry Kane, Human Son, great performances. People people say time in and time out that Tottenham don't have the squad depth. Tottenham ain't got the players. You ain't got a good enough defence. But regardless of all of those players or all of these different things that we have wrong, wrong with our squad, we have Harry Kane and Human Son. They're two of the best players in their position in the Premier League. Two of the best players in their position in world football. Human Son's coming for that golden boot. Mo Salah needs to watch out. He's one goal off him. He's got about three or four more non-penalty goals. We're going to have to start that conversation about Human Son being better than him. But, hey, that golden boot, he he's coming for it. Um, but on, uh, I see that Saracen mentioned about uh, the best young team in the world. We still got these players. Where, where were they tonight? Where was Saka? Where was ESR? Where was Martinelli? 
I'm not being funny. They didn't come up against any good defenders. Like Alan said, they come up against Emerson and Sessignon, two players that the Tottenham fan base themselves, we laugh at them. We laugh that we have these players. We joke with them. We're like, yeah, you can have fun on that right wing. We don't care. But they didn't. They didn't even beat Emerson and, and, and uh, Sessignon. Both of those two players, were one. they were some of our best performers today. They were some of our best performers. They put in a great shift. Um, I think we looked good at the back without Romero. Um, Dyer, he organised everything perfectly. Although the first 15 minutes were a bit shaky um, uh, <clears throat> with Davinson at the back, I think he invited a lot of pressure every time he got onto the ball. Um, we, we managed to deal with it and we got the job done. Um, and like uh, I think Terry, you mentioned with the red cards, um, it's typical Arsenal. They're over-aggressive in midfield. You can't play Shaka and El Nene next to each other and expect your team not to concede a record or just concede numerous of fouls. They kept fouling high up the pitch. We kept winning penalty, um, winning fouls. And that's just how we play. Every time Kane got the ball on the half turn, it's what he's expecting. He's going to leave a trailing leg because he knows that those players there are just going to keep kicking at him. So not surprised by today's result at all. Um it, it, it's something that we needed, uh, not just um, for Champions League, but as a fan base, we needed this big win against Arsenal. It brings the confidence back. It brings the belief back in Antonio Conte. And um, this summer, everyone needs to be wary, man. They need to be scared because we are coming. Man United, I'm not worried. Chelsea, I'm not worried. Arsenal, I'm not worried. We're looking upwards. Ooh, big statements. Wow. Big, big statements. statements. Listen, I like the conv- I like fans being fans. Top man, great call. Make sure you come back on the terrace, my friend. We need good good Spurs fans on here. Uh, and we'll chat again soon, brother. Thank you, man. Take care, take care, take care. Good guy as well. Young Tommy's coming on to have his say now. Big Arsenal fan, big Arteta out. Uh, what are you saying, young Tommy? I'm all right, man. Egal, you're my mate, man, but stop blaming the ref, please. We weren't good enough tonight. Please stop blaming the ref. You're acting like Ty now, please, please. Stop acting like Ty. Stop blaming the ref. We weren't good enough. We didn't turn up for the derby. Holden is a Holden is a fool. This is why, for me, I want Holden gone. I told people, stop gassing up this guy. You people gas up Holden. He's shit. Shit. Stop gassing him up. Xhaka, I want him sold. He, he wasn't good enough either. Cedric is a clown. Not good enough. I'm sick of people gassing up these average players. If you want to go forward, stop gassing up these average guests and get someone better. And obviously, this manager, for me, he's not taking us over the line. I don't even know if we're going to beat Newcastle because this is going to be a tough game. This manager ain't good enough. He's not t- going to take us over the line. This is why Tottenham have got Conte. I think Tottenham will get over the line with a world-class manager while this novice ain't taking us over the line because he's not good enough. He ain't good enough to take us over to over the line for top four. This is why. And you know what? We were, we weren't good enough. Tottenham deserved it. Congrats to Tottenham. You deserve to win the derby. We were just pathetic, pathetic, pathetic again. I told people to stop gassing up these players. You're, and you're gassing up this manager. He ain't good enough. Two back back to back eighth place finishes, and you're gassing up this manager. Why are you gassing him up for? What you used to you used to put out coins for Pep Guardiola. <laughs> Every time we win, you gas up this manager. Oh, when we win games, there's Arteta in. When we lose games, there's Arteta out. When we draw games, you lot just flip-flop. I don't flip-flop like most stupid Arsenal fans. You lot love to gas up these players and you, you gas up this manager. Why? Pathetic performance. Can't hear you. Give me one second, Terry. Should of uh, uh, Arteta should have seen it. Uh, come in. Conte uh, is Italian. They know how to get under your skin. I remember him as a player. He was very crafty. Um, I'm not sure that's an Italian trait. I think that's just what the best, best top sports people, they, they have a tendency to be able to do that, get under your skin and do the right thing. But like, I kind of disagree with what a few things have been said, Saracen and stuff. I get they've got a very good young squad, yeah. but this is where that in itself is something to be excited about, but you've got to demand quality is added to it, yeah. experience is added to it. And it's funny, really, because that's when you're really going to see how good 
Arteta is. Say you went out this summer in Arsenal and you buy three players, four players, 24, 25, 26, who are regarded as really talented. You bring players like that in. Let's see how he handles that mixture together. Yeah. Uh, DJ Harry's here, big Arsenal fan. What are you saying, mate? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I'm, I enjoyed tonight's game. Um, I'm sure you mm. didn't. Um, lots of mixed reviews tonight. Some screaming at Arteta to go, moaning at the players. A gal blaming the referee. Saracen coming on saying that still got a great team, still going to do it. Where's your head at tonight, Hal? Well, I've just got home from the game. So it's half for me to blame the referee because it sounds silly, but that atmosphere was so crazy and... It was almost like hard to consume the game. Uh, just quickly, fair play to Spurs fans and fair play to Spurs because that is an incredible stadium, like unbelievable. And the atmosphere inside was was like almost overpowering. Even I felt that. And I just felt like as a team, once Spurs got that penalty, and I've, I've seen it briefly. I mean, it does feel really, really, really soft, but it is what it is. It's been given. Once they scored that first goal, that's it. Like I knew the game was over and that's not, a criticism of Arsenal. That's just like the magnitude of these derbies. We've seen at the Emirates plenty of times. We get that first goal, the fans get up, the game's over. We had a similar performance um, against Spurs at home, you know, back in the summer. So it's one of those games where obviously it's so it's so disheartening because it means so much more than, than it did when we played them at mm -hmm. the start of the season. And the, the effects of this game could prove huge. And obviously we've picked up injuries, suspensions, and now we're going into Newcastle, the biggest game in the past five, six years you know, with, with a really thin thin squad again. So, you know, the knockdown effects of this performance, of this game and result is really, really bad. But when it comes to the actual game, like, I thought we started OK. Spurs get the penalty mm. and that's it. The game's done. We go down to 10 men. Rob Holding gets sucked in. I think Rob Holding's a decent defender. I don't link Rob Holding as a squad player. Uh, I don't link that to him making a mistake. I don't think him him making a mistake is because he's a bottle job or because he's not good enough. I just think he made a mistake. We've seen many great players at Arsenal get red cards. I think he just made a mistake because Son's a very clever, very, very clever, wonderful footballer. And yeah, like I say, penalty went in, 2-0, the game's done. So you can talk about where was Saka, where was ESR, where's this geezer, where's that geezer? 2-3-0, momentum's with Spurs. We can't get the ball. We've got 10 men. It is what it is. Spurs done really, really well. And we've got to dust ourselves off and go again. And that's the message. Well, that's the vibe I get from Arteta. That's the vibe I get from many Arsenal fans in the stadium who were absolutely brilliant today. Absolutely brilliant. It's like, right, fourth place is, is still in our hands. Let's go to Newcastle. Let's get three points. And then it goes down to the uh, final game of the season. Mate, listen, I think you, you rounded it up really, really well. It's good to get you back on the show, mate. Um, it's been a long, long time, and I'm sure we'll chat again soon, brother. Take care, mate. All the best. Take care, mate. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to talk longer, but we've got a few more calls to get through before the end. Uh, Cameron, sorry, mate. There you go. You're back. Yeah, I can hear you now. What's up? Yeah, I'm all good, my friend. What do you want to say? Um, I said it. Tottenham are going to win this game, and Tottenham's going to finish top four. Um, playing it like we... We saw today Arteta versus Conte in these last two games is going to be the decider. And I don't see a world where they don't draw points in Newcastle. That's maybe I'm wrong. But and once that happens, then Conte is just going to do what he does. Like he, he knew exactly what he was doing when he came into that game. It was very I was impressed with the, the way Tottenham started. Even like people were saying, oh, it was a slow start. I'm like they did exactly what they do all the time. Um, like they stuck to their game plan. And, and I feel like Arteta felt right into his hands. Um also, Cedric starting. I get it. He, there's nobody else, but he's bad. He's real bad. Jess called it out on Instagram. Like, he's real bad. That's, that's, people are talking about holding, but the penalty was bad. The penalty was stonewall, in my opinion, as a, as a neutral. Like, it, it, if he didn't call it out, I'd have been shot. So I think that's where Arsenal actually lost the game, um, in my opinion. Yeah, listen, I, look, I think most of us kind of agree in here, like Colleen, everybody. It was, a, it was a soft penalty, but look, we were sat in this room with Kesh when Man United conceded almost an identical one. I still can't wrap my head. I've got to listen to it back what Egal was trying to explain that it was... Mm. You, Arsenal got an advantage from that and it scored off of it instead of getting a direct penalty. But they were checking for a... The offside. They had to review back. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a different scenario, but they still looked at that foul. But my point was, Gal said if that was not given by the ref and reviewed, it wouldn't have been given. 
well, you had one reviewed in the same way it was given. That's my point. I, I, I think it was. I think it was one. Um, the more I look at it, I get why people say it's soft. It was, it, was, it was the deliberate sort of, he had no reason to do it. It wasn't, yeah. defenders commit those fouls all the time, but you meant to lean into them subtly. You've got to be yeah. cuter. Yeah. You know. Barreled no, into I, totally it. was in the air. And for me, like, obviously Sun's going to get that. What, I, and people, wait, are you saying they were reviewed? Because I thought he called it on the spot. It's not, it seemed like he was pretty quick. To- no, no, he did. What, what Gal was saying is if the referee didn't give it, he doesn't feel that VAR would have, like reviewed it and overturned it. And maybe, and maybe, oh, he's maybe right. not, yeah, but that doesn't like, matter. But that's the whole point. Jesus Christ, a gal. Oh, pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, question for you, Cam. Big question for you. Who's making the top four now, in your opinion? It's Tottenham. It's Tottenham. Um, I, I just think they're going to finish strong. I don't see them losing. I see Arsenal dropping points again. They're a young team. They get the same thing that everybody brags about with all the Arsenal fans. Oh, we have a young team or this or that. That's also not going to work in your favor when it comes down to really high-pressure games at the end of a season with a young coach going up against Harry Kane and Son at this point. Son yeah. was ready to score five goals in his next game because he was pissed off as all hell when he got taken off. I love that. He was like, for real, like I'm one goal away. Like, Let me stay on. But that's just my take. Yeah, it's my long answer to your short question. <laughs> I hear you on that, mate. Cam, I appreciate you calling in and having your say, mate. Top, top yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Everyone that has tuned in tonight, everyone that has super chatted, everyone who's become a member, everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Colleen, uh, unlucky. Uh, <laughs> uh, Al, thank you both for coming on. Uh, KJ, Daniel, and, and Javern in the studio, thank you all for your support. To all of the viewers, you're amazing. So many likes hit tonight. So many new subscribers. Thank you. We're back tomorrow with hot takes, building up to the weekend, some great hot takes in there as well. A very special episode of the 12th Man uh, and the Fan Channel re- Review Show back in the morning as well. So make sure you're tuning into the Terrace tomorrow. It's going to be a big, big Friday ahead of a big FA Cup weekend. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right. Play the game. Win it life. Have no shame. No time, feel the pain, with the grind, I could change in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch hands.